So, hello and welcome to lesson 13 in our study of functional analysis. And this happens to be the 13th lesson and it's on the equivalent norms. So, I've named this video equivalent norms or this lesson equivalent norms part 2, right? So, actually, in this video, I'm just going to solve some two likely examinable questions as far as equivalent norms are concerned, okay? So these are the questions. Show that one over root two times the one norm is less than or equal to the two norm and less than or equal to the one norm in R2. And the second question says we should show that the equivalent norm is an equivalent relation. And that is if we can have alpha times the norm A, then it's less than or equal to the norm B, less than or equal to beta, the norm of A. We can also write it in this form, okay? So these are the two questions that we want to solve in this video. So let's proceed. But before we solve these questions, can you remember the definition for equivalent norms? Okay, if you've forgotten, then let me remind you. So recall that we learned in lesson 10 that two norms, right, denoted by these two are equivalent if there exist two real numbers, for instance, alpha greater than zero, beta greater than zero, such that this relation holds, okay, all right. So that's what we mean, all right. So we have to show that this is true in R2, okay. So in R2, we can pick a certain vector x. And since it is two-dimensional, we can have AB, right? So the first thing we are going to do in this proof is to first show that the norm 2 is less than or equal to the norm 1 in this relation, OK? So since we have our vector to be AB, when we find a two-norm of it, all right, it's going to be root of a squared plus b squared. And you should also remember your formula for the norms, all right? So, you know, our two norm is given by x1, x2 squared, squared, plus 2xn squared, raised to the power 1 over 2, all right? So this is going to be the p norm. You know, we have root of a squared plus b squared. And to find the one norm, the one norm will be the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B, right? And we want to show that this here is less than or equal to this. So first, let's just show that this is less than or equal to this, or this is true, right? So you can see that this is given by, the two norm is given by roots of A squared plus B squared. And that is less than or equal to... Um, the magnitude of A plus the absolute value of B, right? So when we square both sides of this equation, we are going to get A squared plus B squared to be less than or equal to A squared plus 2AB, right? So when you square, so when you have A plus B squared, and you expand this, you get A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. But we just brought absolute value of AB here that so that when A is negative or B is negative, we'll still have a negative number, okay? So we are supposed to show that this relation is true. And we could see that when we compare the values on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we have A squared plus B squared here. We also have a squared plus b squared here. So for instance, when we take the difference, we are going to have 0 is less than or equal to 2 magnitude of a magnitude of b. And this statement is true, right? So we are supposed to show that this statement is true. And if this statement is true, then it means that the whole of this is also true. And it's true because, for instance, when you take this relation here, there will only be an equality if a and b are both 0. In that case, we'll have 0 will be equal to 0. But aside that, any value that A and B takes will give us something which will be greater than 0. So it means that 0 will always be less than or equal to 2 times the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Right? So 
the term 2 times the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, the absolute value, on the right hand side shows that indeed the 2 norm is less than or equal to the 1 norm. Okay. So now that we are done showing the first part, right? So we have shown this part. Let's also show the second part, right? So now we are coming to show the second part. So you are supposed to show that 1 over root 2 by the 1 norm is less than or equal to the 2 norm, okay? So when you multiply 2 by root 2, this is the same as the 1 norm is less than or equal to root 2 by the 2 norm, okay? And the 1 norm was given by this, and this is the 2 norm, right? So you, you should remember that. So when we square both sides, then we'll get a squared plus 2, absolute value of a, absolute value of b plus b squared, less than or equal to 2 times a squared plus b squared. So when we expand this, you're going to get this is less than or equal to 2a squared plus 2b squared. Then when you write it in <laughs> simple way, we can have a squared plus b squared plus a squared plus b squared. It's just another form of writing this. So you can see that this a squared can take away this a squared this b squared can take away this b squared. So for this equality to hold, we are supposed to compare these two. 2 times absolute value of a times absolute value of b and a squared plus b squared and show that indeed this here is less than or equal to this here. If you're able to show this, then it means that the inequality holds. So let's do that. So you realize that 2 times the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b is always less than or equal to a squared plus b squared for all a, b in r. So for instance, the only case when equality will hold is when a is 0 and b is 0. Aside that, any number of a and b, you would always have this here, b less than or equal to a squared plus b squared. So since this inequality is true, it implies that, yes, 1 over root 2, the 1 norm is less than or equal to 1 over, um, is, is less than or equal to the 2 norm, less than or equal to the 1 norm, okay? So, we've been able to show that, indeed, this is true, okay? So, um... Now, let's solve our second question. Okay. So, let's solve our second question. So, the second question says that we should show that the equivalent norm is an equivalent relation. That is, if we have this, then we can also write it in this way. Okay. And the proof is very, very simple to understand. So, all right. So we have this, all right. Okay. So we have to show that if we have this, then we can also write it in this way. So what I will do is that let's just take the first two parts. So we first take this part. And we divide you by alpha. When we divide you by alpha, we are going to get less than or equal to 1 over alpha. I hope you get that. Then we call this equation 1. Then we take the second part. So the second part will be, so we took the first part. Now we are taking the second part. So this is the second part. The norm of B is less than or equal to beta then the norm of A. So this one, we can divide you by beta. When we do that, we will get 1 over beta this, and we will get this, right? So comparing equation 1 to equation 2, when you compare equation 1 and equation 2, we can write this. So we would have 1 over beta, the B norm is less than or equal to this right from equation two and when you come to equation one 
this year is also less than or equal to this. So we can join the two together. All right. But you could see that in the question, we had C here and D here. All right. We have C here and D here. So we will say, let C be equal to 1 over beta and let D be equal to 1 over alpha. So when we make that substitution, we'll have C And which was what we wanted to show, right? So indeed, we've been able to show that the equivalent norm is an equivalent relation, okay? Right, so thank you very much. That's all for this video. So in our next lesson, we will talk about continuous linear operators or the bounded linear operators and prove an important theorem, okay? All right, so thank you very much and see you in the next lesson.